Florida or plants. Allow me to introduce Rud Stella. I got me another greenhouse cabinet. Just pack a little bit, just pack a little bit. <laughs> This time I decided to go with a Rutsta Tall, as you can see here, and I named her Rutstella. Ella, Ella, eh, eh, eh. I get no sense. So let me just get right into it. I'm gonna give you a tour of this bad bitch right here. Let's go. This cabinet is in my living room next to my workspace, so I can stare at my plants all day while I'm working. I purposely stocked this cabinet with plants that have all green leaves. So variegated and pink and silvery leaves are all the rage, but I wanted to give green leaves some love. And check out this side view, y'all. It's not just about the front view. The side view matters too when you're building your cabinet. So this cabinet was inspired by the existing vintage design in my living room and by historic black and Hispanic botanists. So make sure to watch this video to the end so you can learn more about the scientists that I chose. And check out my living room tour video if you haven't already. So let's get into these plants. The first plant that I have here in the cabinet is Hoya Weyedii. And I had such a hard time deciding which plant to put here, but I decided on this. And you can see it's draping a bit, giving some hang time, giving some dimension. Uh, it's in a six inch terracotta pot in this metal basket. And right next to that is Hoya Abovata. So these are the king and queen of the cabinet. And she is also in a six inch terracotta pot. Hot. and I don't know if you can tell but she grows kind of wild she's got like vines all over the place in this cabinet uh, growing up growing sideways growing over the other Hoya but I love it I love a big old unruly plant a tab of poets a tab of poets I just looked that up as I was recording this because I did not know how to say Philodendron Atabapoense. But here she is. <laughs> and next to that is an Alocasia stingray. This is my third time with this plant, but we gonna make it this time. And it's really having a, a great time showing out in some Lekka. So I've got a good feeling that three is the charm. So this plant is one of the newer additions to the cabinet. This is Raphidophora Hai, and I thought it would be really cool to add some shingling plants to this cabinet. And I just have it attached to the back and the sides with some clear command hooks. Now on to the bottom. So I believe this is a Burl Marks philodendron. If it's not, let me know in the comment. Uh, but behind that is a Syngonium Chia Pence. And as you can see, it takes up about two thirds of the cabinet, which is one of the reasons why I wanted this in the first place. I wanted somewhere to have like really tall plants. Next to that is Shingrilla Pothos, also known as Cooked Spinach Pothos. <laughs> and in the corner, we have Hartley Philodendron, which I've allowed to grow up to the very top of the cabinet on the wall grid. And below that is another plant that's two thirds of the way up or even taller. And this is Philodendron tripartitum. And at the base of that plant is just some runaway string of turtles. I have so many plants with runaway string of turtles at the base. Next to that is another shingling plant, Philodendron. I don't know how to say this, y'all. It's a Philodendron shingling plant. You read it. And the princess of the cabinet is Philodendron tortum definitely a wish list plant for me and I was glad to be able to grab one so y'all that's all the plants that are in this cabinet 
Let's move on to the equipment. The links for everything that I purchased are in the description box. If you're curious about everything, go ahead and take a look. Uh, so this is one of two lights. This is an LED grow light panel that I have. And uh, the other light is hanging from a cord and it's just a grow light bulb that I painted red and put this metal cage over. So I wanted to make sure to show y'all some cable management. So the cable to the panel light is actually white and I taped over it with electrical tape and taped it into the corner so it's really undetectable. And I used a decorative cord for the hanging light, right? If it's a pretty cord, you don't have to hide it. I'm tapping my temples right now. So I'm just gonna show you some cord management in the back. Uh, that black thing is a modem, but uh, everything is plugged into this power strip and it's hidden by this box in front of the shelf so you really can't see anything. But this is the only fan that I'm using. I thought it was super cute, copper vintage looking fan. And the fan is metal so I was able to just use a magnet to hang it to the ceiling. This is one of literally four thermometers and humidity monitors that I have in this cabinet. Overkill, but I have like three of these kind of vintage manual style ones because I thought they were cute. The ones in the bottom, there's two because I couldn't figure out which one I wanted and it was too late to return one. And hidden away, I have this Bluetooth monitor, which I am in love with. I have these in all of my plant spaces and they're amazing. Um, they allow you to keep track of the temperatures and the humidity and it stores data so you can look at trends and you can export data and y'all, I'm just super in love with these. So now I'm gonna show you some insulation. So where the door closes, I used foam insulation tape. As you can see, I hope you can see, it's a quarter inch wide and a half inch thick. And in other places in the cabinet, I used electrical tape and y'all, it's pretty impossible to see, but it's there. And I love the way that the tape just blends seamlessly with this cabinet. Like you almost cannot tell that it's there at all. But if I'm doing a cabinet, it has to be super decorated. Trust. Let's start with the wall grid. It's held up with four of these swivel magnetic hooks uh, just for safe measure. I think each hook could hold 33 pounds horizontally. And I got these wall grids from Amazon. They're 16 by 12 inches and they fit in this space pretty perfectly. They almost reached the bottom. Uh, there was two of them in a pack and you can see that I zip tied them together and it fits quite well into the side. As you can see, it reaches the other end. And so I just used that to hang pictures and let my plants grow up and vine up. So let's talk about the pictures because I know you want to know about that. Uh, I actually found a huge box of antique picture frames on Facebook Marketplace for 10 bucks. I painted some of the frames red. Uh, the pictures are either Etsy downloads or just pictures that I saved from Google Images and I had them printed at Office Max. So they are easy to replace if they get damaged or if I change my mind. This cabinet has a black and metal back, but I covered that with wood grain contact paper and uh, walnut style because that's the type of wood that I have a lot of in my living room and I wanted it to match. Almost everything in this cabinet is from Amazon, but these baskets that hold the Hoyas are from Target and they're by the Magnolia brand. Now it's hard to tell, but I literally have four hooks each for these baskets. And I tried two, but they started to slip. So each of these baskets has four hooks. The smaller basket below is held up with the swivel hooks, which I really love the look of. Uh, there's a chain in the middle, which is held up by another hook. And it is cute, but it's also functional. Because of the swivel hooks, the basket leans forward. So that chain pulls it up straight so the plants aren't spilling over. So at the bottom of the cabinet, I do have this magnifying glass, which I've actually had for a few years. It came from TJ Maxx or Home Goods, but I thought it was like a cute scientific looking detail. So that's why I put it in there. 
And in the back is it's antique mister, but it's not antique because I just bought it from Amazon, but it looks antique. And I do use it sometimes to boost humidity, especially since there is not a humidifier in this cabinet. With this project, I really wanted to highlight some PLC botanists that I am inspired by. George Washington Carver is probably the most well-known black botanist. He rose to fame in the early 20th century by developing crop rotation practices. At the time, many poor farmers had soils depleted due to repeated cotton planting. Ines Mejia, a Mexican-American woman, began her botany career in her mid-50s and discovered a new genus of flowering plants. Jane Datcher was the first African-American woman to receive an advanced degree from Cornell. She studied the plant species Hepatica. Marie Clark Taylor was the first woman to earn a doctorate from Fordham University and was the head of botany at Howard University for almost 30 years. Who are your planty heroes? Let us know in the comments below. So thanks for joining me on this cabinet tour and go ahead and hit that subscribe button because this is not the last time you'll be seeing this cabinet. There'll be plenty of updates. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and watch my Meals by Tour video for my other IKEA greenhouse cabinets. And also be sure to follow us on Instagram and give us a like on Facebook. So thank you for coming to shine some light on our green space and we will see you next time. Salute.